Hello. I hope this video finds you safe and secure from the challenges you and your nations are facing. I am Colonel Doug Merritt, the Command Inspector General for the United States Army Africa. And I am Sergeant Major Justin Grieve, the Inspector General Sergeant Major for U.S. Army Africa. Now we believe that those of us serving in security forces share a similar sense of duty and purpose. Leaders and members of security forces serving in Africa, Europe, the United States, and across the globe serve to protect and provide for our families, secure our citizens, defend our countries, and have a strong desire to be respected for our sacrifices. During my almost 30 years in the Army, I have served with security forces all around the world and found this to be true regardless of nationality, tribe, race, gender, or age, and from the most junior soldier to the most senior leader. We have developed a series of nine short videos focused on organizations that assist in achieving the aforementioned goals, ombudsmen, mediators, and inspectors general. The goal of these videos is to initiate a conversation about the authorities, independence, organization, functions, and processes of security force ombudsmen, mediators, and inspectors general. Additionally, we hope to promote the establishment of military oversight organizations where none exist, to stimulate discussion about the functions our office conduct and how we do it, and to share lessons learned for all of our benefit. To be precise, we are focused on security forces, but realize that oversight mechanisms like ombudsmen, mediators, and inspectors general are relevant in all government organizations. We want to be extremely inclusive and welcome everyone to join the discussion and provide varying perspectives and ideas. As the author Kenneth Blanchard wrote, none of us are as smart as all of us. Our intent in this video series is to share our perspectives and provide information on how U.S. Army Inspectors General provide oversight of our forces, how we are organized, selected, and trained, the functions we perform, and the benefits we provide. Developing a military oversight system, or if you already have security force IGs, allowing the collaboration of African and non-African IGs allows us to share the positive impacts of our forces. Now I realize that every nation, every security force has a different history, a different culture, and a varying range of requirements. Our structures, policies, regulations, and processes differ. Our countries face a wide and ever-changing array of challenges, both domestic and international. Our security forces must manage training, equipping, budget constraints, recruiting, and other equally challenging concerns, all while achieving the tasks directed by our governments. Additionally, we are executing tasks among our populations and the citizens of other countries while domestic, international, and social media report on our actions. Regardless of whether we are conducting combat operations, enforcing rule of law, responding to a disaster, or whatever challenges we are responding to, our actions have tremendous impacts. This includes actions from everyone in our organizations, from soldiers, non-commissioned officers and officers and their families, to civilians, contractors, to senior leaders. We all have an impact. The way our members and leaders treat each other, treat civilians, and how well they follow policies and regulations affects how well we can provide for and protect our families, secure our citizens, and protect our countries. These are the gauges that people judge our level of professionalism. It determines how we are perceived. Are we respected? Are we feared? Are we trusted? Do our citizens run toward us or away from us in time of crisis? I propose that unbiased, confidential oversight mechanisms such as ombudsmen, mediators, and inspectors general promote the continuous improvement of professional security forces and fosters trust and respect within security forces, between security forces and our citizens, with our governments and amongst the international community. Our forces are never stagnant. They are in a state of improvement or they are in decline. Ombudsmen, mediators, and inspectors general reinforce effective policies, identify and recommend new policies and regulations. They identify and recommend how to improve policies. They enforce fair treatment of security forces and the civilians they protect and promote trust and respect. This is a profound positive impact on the effectiveness of security forces and how they are perceived. Although ombudsmen, 
mediators and inspectors general have common purposes, they are not the same. They have organizational, authoritative, and functional differences that provide special benefits to security forces. According to the African Ombudsman and Mediators Association, an ombudsman or mediator is an independent, impartial, public official with authority and responsibility to receive, investigate, or address the complaints of ordinary citizens about actions or maladministrations of certain public bodies, and when appropriate, the ombudsman can make findings and recommendation and publish reports. Whereas ombudsmen and mediators are independent public officials, inspectors general are members of the security force and work for commanding generals. Hence the theme of this video series is of the force, for the force. Because they serve in the force, they understand the organization, its missions, and its culture. Additionally, their offices are located near their customers, providing easy, confidential access. Unlike most staff, U.S. Army IGs work directly for, and only for, a commander. This provides a level of independence, the ability to be fair and unbiased, and the freedom to interact within the community they support. Other benefits of IGs within security forces include complaints, which are handled within the force, providing faster responses, and it alleviates pressure from governmental ombudsmen and mediators. U.S. Army IGs are not lawyers, but we work closely together to ensure fair, unbiased treatment that is in accordance with laws, regulations, and policies. IGs are not police or criminal investigators and do not have arrest authority but they also work together on complaints that are criminal in nature. IGs serve in various capacities within the security force. For example, I am a strategic planner that served in both the artillery and infantry. As a broadening assignment, I was appointed to serve as an inspector general for the United States Army Africa. Once I finish my tour as an IG, I will return to fill a strategic planner position within the Army of the force for the force. I am an infantryman serving as the inspector general sergeant major. Upon completion of my tour, I return to the infantry, of the force, for the force. From the U.S. perspective, we consider inspectors general to be the eyes, ears, voice, and conscious of the Army. The eyes identify and build understanding about Army systems. The ears listen to and act upon the observations and concerns of soldiers, civilians, family members, and the public. The voice disseminates and reinforces the policies and standards established by Army senior leaders. And finally, the conscious, to be a forceful advocate for what is right, then move forward and ensure soldiers, civilians, family members, and the public understand what right looks like. By being the eyes, ears, voice, and conscious of the Army, we reinforce and promote a professional, trusted force that is ready to achieve any mission at any time. The Inspector General provides a benefit not available through any other organization. Through assistance and investigations, they provide anyone serving or working with or in contact with security forces the ability to voice a concern and to hold personnel and units accountable to policies and regulations. They conduct inspections that assist in understanding what units are doing well and what they could do better. The recommendations they provide result in updated policies, regulations, and processes to improve security force readiness, efficiency, and effectiveness. Inspector General records are confidential, but provide transparency by publishing reports on trends to provide the force the ability to focus on correcting systemic issues. We provide more information on Inspectors General's functions in videos 6 through 9. Finally, as Inspectors General interact with their community, they educate through teaching and training to assist in overcoming issues and improving readiness. The development and enhancement of Security Force Inspectors General requires minimal resources and provides unequal benefits. In videos numbers 2 and 3, we will provide additional information on how the U.S. Inspectors General is organized and how it benefits our force. In the U.S. Army, we have a Department of the Army Inspector General that answers to the Secretary of the Army and is located in the headquarters for our Army. We have command inspectors general that support units commanded by general officers. Each command inspector general has an office that resides within the community they support to provide access and confidentiality. The size and location of IG offices is unit dependent and based on the size of the unit and its geographical dispersion. 
For example, I have seven inspectors general in my office, and we serve a community of over 10,000 soldiers, family members, civilians, contractors, and provide access to Italians that interact with our forces. Other considerations include selecting, validating, training, and certifying inspectors general. Additionally, a system to hold inspectors general accountable and protect them from reprisal. We will address these in videos four and five. This is the first in a series of nine videos to build on the discussion of security force oversight mechanisms, ombudsman, mediators, and inspectors general, with the primary focus being inspectors general. This video serves as an introduction to inspectors general, the series of videos, and to our office. Each video provides a specific topic where we provide the perspective of the U.S. Army Inspectors General to include examples of the impacts it has at the strategic, operational, and tactical level. Videos two and three focus on personnel, location, administrative processes of Inspectors General. Videos four and five will discuss how to select, train, certify, and maintain the professionalism of the office. Then six through nine provide insight into the functions that Inspectors General provide. Again, we can only speak to the U.S. system, but look forward to learning about other perspectives from each of you, to share lessons learned, and to provide an active network that in the U.S. Inspector General system we refer to as technical channels. This really provides the all of us from Mr. Blanchard's quote. If you are interested in collaborating, whether it is to discuss the development of a new office or to share perspectives as Inspectors General, please contact the Security Cooperation Office at the U.S. Embassy within your country. Let them know you are interested in collaborating with the United States Army Africa Inspectors General Office. We look forward to working with each of you and seeing how far we can go together. In closing, military ombudsmen, mediators, and inspectors generals promote trust, respect, and confidence of security forces within the force, with the government, and with citizens by providing accountability and a confidential, unbiased venue for leaders, soldiers and their families, and civilians that work or interact in any capacity with defense forces. They promote readiness and continuous improvement of our forces. Inspectors generals are of, of the, the force, force for the force. force.